previously on the off-grid family we've never talked about planning before and the reason for that is it comes with a massive dose of luck it is possible but if it was easy everyone would be doing it i'd say beware of people that are saying we can give you the silver bullet they don't know how to get it so this is planning part two and uh, last year i was, was listening to the radio and a guy came on that lived off grid and he was talking about um, what he does, you know, the water and everything else, and stream and whatnot, the off-grid things. But then it got to the bit where they talked about planning. I think this was BBC. And uh, he, he said, uh, well, we did it. Yeah, there's lots of ways of doing it, but we did it the right way. And, and I was interested to hear what his idea of the right way was, because this isn't a good v's bad sort of scenario. This is uh, what the planners consider right, as in going down all the right routes which to me isn't right or wrong it's obedience it's the obedient route to take that is what is right in the eyes of planning I was bemused really because it's a conditioned response and a lot of people say it they say we did it the right way and I mean I don't know whether it becomes something that becomes just the norm but I suppose that's what a conditioned response is isn't it it becomes the norm to just say we did something the right way without thinking about the consequences of what's right and what's wrong because you know you have some likes of Donald Trump he famously uh, upset loads of people up in Scotland when he built his golf course he was a bit of a bully and um, he basically uh, built on areas or bulldozed areas that were uh, had SSS eyes on them site of scientific special interest and I don't think that was the right way, but he paid money to the local airport and that's what he did. Uh, but in the eyes of planning, that would be the right way. He got, went about it, he asked permission. Whether it feels right or wrong, that is, in, in their view, the right way. But it's not the right way for me and um, I don't feel that's right. For me, the right way is not to upset your neighbours. If you upset your neighbours and you're a bit of an arsehole and bullish then that's the wrong way obedience is what you've done you've been obedient whereas if you get government you know they're not they're not following the same rules at all are they we you know they're the biggest liars out there and we pay our taxes and big corporations are getting away with that paying the taxes and the government don't do anything about it you know we are we are making we are listening to rules that are potentially not the right way maybe we're just being obedient I was saying about doing it the slow-ish way of getting planning, you, you know, which could take 20 years, especially if the planning laws change. But the thing is, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, and that's the saying. And for some people, that wasn't the answer they were looking for, because they're looking for that silver bullet, that quick way of getting on there. Well, get, you know, how do I get permission? How do I do this? How do I do that? Exactly. It's very difficult. It, there's a life to live somewhere else before you get here. You know, I still say be down here, make it, make it better, make it into a woodland. For those of you that have perhaps been on your land for two years and you were hoping to get to the four year rule and use that, it could take them another couple of years for this 10 year rule to come in. So since filming this, it's been brought to our attention that the levelling up and regeneration bill has uh, been passed. Uh, the four year rule still remains though, strangely. Uh, so the bill has become an act uh, and we'll just see where it goes. It could take a week, it could be a decade before the four year rule changes, so nobody knows. So but I'd like to thank uh, Paul and Vanessa, uh, Happy Glampers, for that information. But there's a little bit of hope that I read for people that have perhaps been there over the four years and, and still not gone to apply because they think, well why the, why the hell would I want to do that anyway, you know? I shouldn't have to maybe there's people like that about and there is some interesting things I read on it's called Martin's Goodall's blog so in case you hadn't heard the days of the four-year rule may be numbered there is a provision in the leveling up and regeneration bill which if passed in its current form will abolish the four-year rule so that the 10-year rule will then apply to all breaches of planning control. The press have recently picked up on a case in Mole Valley District in Surrey where the council has granted lawful development certificate for a dwelling hidden in woodland in the district. It seems that the neighbours and some local councillors are not happy about this. As in all cases of this type, the dwelling became immune from enforcement and therefore lawful because it had been continuously occupied as a dwelling for four years. The rule is quite straightforward.
If a building is equipped with the essential facilities required for day-to-day -day domestic existence, so that it can genuinely be described as a dwelling, and it is continuously used as a dwelling for at least four years, then its occupants are entitled to apply for a lawful development certificate. Entitled to apply, not that they must apply. The dwelling would be lawful even without the certificate if the qualifications have been met. So if you've been there over four years, he's saying that you are already lawful anyway, without having to apply for it. So in the last video I actually said that it might take him a little bit longer to bring this 10 year rule in because of a changed government, or, or it might not happen. Uh, and someone rightly said it will probably, it will happen because they're all the same and that, and I do agree with that actually. Um, they all work for Davos by the looks of things, they're all shaking hands. You know, Keir Starmer said, do you, you know, when they, they asked him, he's got a video of him saying, uh, do you work for Westminster or do you work for Davos? And he immediately said Davos. Davos or Westminster? Davos. He knows which side his bread's buttered, as do they all. Yeah, that person, I agree with that comment completely that uh, there's no, there's not going to be any difference. It will happen. and um, But it might slow them down while well, they're perhaps doing something else. I don't know. It might take them a bit longer. So a lot of these companies um, are coming out of the woodwork now and saying about the changes to the 10 year rule from the four year rule. And uh, they're saying you might want to hurry up and get in there because we can help you. We can help you get planning. We've got really good, uh, got really good statistics of getting you uh, planning. Have a look at our site and all that sort of stuff. And trying to hurry people into it. Uh, and you think, well, is there a hurry if you're already legal at that stage, and you've got all proof of it? Do you really need to hurry? Because it, according to the some law, planning lawyers, you're already in the clear, and you did it the right way. <laughs>